Hello, my name is David Finney. I'm a Big Fix Technical Advisor based out of Denver, Colorado. Today I'm going to do a video just about a basic Big Fix remote control demonstration and different ways you can leverage it in the environment. That being said, if there's any questions from what I cover today, do not hesitate to reach out. You have my email there in the bottom left hand corner as well as a QR code that will also prompt an email. So if anything comes up, please do not hesitate to reach out. Okay, so first things first. Um, with this, this demonstration is going to be focused on this version here, so pretty recent release. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to get logged into this system here. And what I'm going to start with is the ability to go ahead and actually do a local connection. So what I'm going to do is you can see lots of options here, but I'm going to go and do with a start session. You can go ahead and actually see some of the target information as I've got against that system. And uh, you're able to also see what policies are essentially happening against that system. So you can actually do role-based access controls, you know, applied to AD groups um, against different, you know, target groups. There's a lot of ways to really get granular as to what takes place here. Um, but anyway, moving forward, a couple different modes. Uh, chat, just like it sounds. Uh, monitor is basically where I need to not directly interact with that system, but I want to go ahead and keep an eye on it. Guidance is essentially where we go ahead and, um, you know, basically draw on the screen, highlight things, you know, give some uh, guidance. Active is kind of your full-blown remote control capabilities, and then we do have file transfer only and reboot only. Uh, so we're going to do an active session on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that session as I sent it in there. And this is going to go and launch the remote control controller. And from here, uh, this is going to go ahead and... Uh, you know, establish that session as ex exactly as we defined it. So uh, to begin, um, just a little quick walkthrough on the interface. We have the ability to disconnect right here. We can change modes in flight. We can lock out the user input. We can go ahead and actually send some actions against the uh, the system. So if I was at the login screen, I could do a control alt delete. Um, you see, we got other keystrokes there. We have the drawing tools and highlight tools from the guidance mode. Um, we just do also have the ability to lock workstation, open URLs, enable privacy so that nobody can see what we're up to. And then, you know, some quick launches here. So, you know, if I wanted to get to control panel, there it is. Uh, we do have the ability to go ahead and do a quick information grab. This will, you know, give you basic information against the system itself, networking, even running services. And you do have the ability to also chat through the shell, which as you can see there, it's got some history from stuff I was doing earlier. And, uh, you know, through the shell, you know, like I said, direct interaction, you can see I got some file transfers in there as well. And uh, so, but in any case, uh, you do have the ability to also do collaboration sessions as well. And that's where you can bring in other admins. You can hand over the session to them, or you could just give them temporary control. Um, so it's kind of nice to be able to escalate within the shell. Uh, you do have some ability to capture screens, uh, go ahead and initiate a recording. Uh, you can also put this in policy too, so it's just kicked off on demand. You do have the ability to do file transfer menus as well, so you can go ahead and send a file. I was going to go ahead and just send some uh, VLC real quick here, just for fun. Um, which is right here. I'm going to send that file. And so you can see that's making its way down to the endpoint. And yeah, we'll be good to go here in just a moment on that. And, uh, you know, while that's going, you do also have the ability to go, go ahead and do a send your clipboard text or pull the clipboard text, which is pretty handy. There's some smart card, and then you also have some um, network monitoring so you can see, you know, what your response time is against that session. You do also have the ability to work with multiple monitors here, so you can kind of toggle between the screens. You do have auto-scrolling, so that if you're in a larger resolution session, you can let the mouse kind of guide around it, or you can scale it down uh, for scaled view. And uh, you can see that in this view right here in the background, this is actually in kind of balanced mode right now. You do also have the ability to, you know, kind of bump that over to best quality if you wanted to, or, you know, whatever you see fit. Use best performance, obviously high latency situations. And then uh, each uh, admin actually has the ability to go ahead and configure the tool as well. So you can see everything from, you know, your different uh, run tools, your key sequences, all that's there. Uh, my file transfer finished, I can go and actually click on this uh, folder icon and it'll bring it up on the endpoint for us and we'll be able to work with it. So, um, but yeah, it gives you a pretty good, you know, area to go ahead and kind of work with the, uh, the system. Uh, and like I said, this is under the context of uh, a local, uh, locally connected system. 
Okay, next up, I'm actually going to go ahead and actually initiate a unattended session. And uh, what that is, I'll kind of explain it after I get it launched here in a sec. And uh, so while this is launching, so essentially the system I'm going to go ahead and choose to connect to is actually this endpoint one. And uh, basically, this system currently is uh, over the internet. Um, so I've got it basically marooned off in terms of firewall. It has to go through a broker. Um, the broker is what we set up at the DMZ in order for the remote control sessions to take place over the internet. Now there's a lot of ways to establish this session, but the reason why I wanted to show this one next is because it requires no user interaction uh, on the other end. The only thing it requires is that the target software has already been staged there by BigFix and that it's been configured as such to, you know, basically talk to the broker. Um, it's it's kind of like a polling rhythm. Um, so I've got it set so that every 120 seconds it checks in against the broker, see if, there, see if there's a uh, connection being set up for it. And uh, if it sees it, then it'll go ahead and establish the session. And so as we're waiting for this to begin, it does also capture UAC prompts. So I'm gonna show that too, just cause I know that's a very important uh, point for a lot of users. And uh, so, as this uh, establishes here, there we go. Um, you can see it actually, it doesn't actually have a logged in session right now, which is actually a, kind of an awesome place to start this. Um, so I'm gonna actually go ahead and log into it with the uh, non-admin user. And so, well, there you go, we're in. And again, this system is for all intents and purposes, this is over the internet. Um, and so this same exact, uh, session is exactly what you can establish for you know other systems that maybe I need to do administrative functions you know on again over the internet. Uh, but anyway, so the thing I wanted to show about this, it does have the full capability as we demonstrated earlier. Uh, but the thing that I also wanted to demonstrate is the uh, ability here. I'm going to go ahead and go to the downloads here. So there's that same VLC that we were messing with um, a little bit earlier. Uh, I want to go ahead and install this. Well, I am a non-elevated uh, privileged user, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and get this prompt. As you can see, I'm actually capturing this. And so kind of wanted to call that out just cause you know, that's usually kind of a complication in this day and age is actually capturing those prompts over the internet. And so it gives you all that capability right there. And I didn't even have to bug the user in order to uh, get this session established. So a lot of capability there that you're able to leverage. And actually, real quick before I jump off of this, uh, you see I changed the page in the background. I wanted to go and show there's actually a way to track this. Um, so you see I've got two systems that are basically checking into the broker right now. You see I got one session automatically going. Um, so if this was a larger scale, you know, outside of, you know, 10 systems in my lab environment, uh, you would get some really valuable data here, not to mention if you have, you know, multiple brokers. Um, kind of the cool little note about this is that you'd be able to kind of track it live how many systems are actually pulling against the broker. Um, and the ability to go ahead and actually uh, utilize the uh, remote control infrastructure to even do load balancing amongst them, uh, which is awesome, and uh, even some failover capability too. So if one of the brokers were to fail over, it would actually send all the communications over to the other broker. So there's some really strong capabilities there. And uh, one other note about that, each remote control broker up in the DMZ can actually support 300 concurrent remote control connections. Um, so in most cases, I mean, you're probably going to install two of them just for a little bit of, uh, you know, one is none, two is one type strategy. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, pretty strong capability there that you're able to leverage and track. Okay, next little demonstration point. So this is that same system. I'm connected through it through a different way. This is actually an RDP now. Uh, but the reason why I wanted to show this a little differently is, um, you know, still not elevated, right? Um, but the reason why I wanted to show this one real quick is a different way that you're able to get to that system. So let's say that you don't have any pre-staged software out there. Um, I can go ahead and actually start a broker session. And you'll see, same kind of download as we did before. And uh, once this launches, it'll actually give me a URL that I could pipe over to the end user. So let's you know kind of pretend here this is the uh, URL I need to give the user. And so what I'm going to have them do is go ahead and add or enter this, uh, this session here. And so it's going to make me approve that real quick. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and get this established. So this is a different remote control session type. Uh, no pre-staged software that I'm leaning on here. This is exactly what you'd be able to leverage. So that's going to do a quick download. Once that finishes, I'm going to go ahead and launch it. 
and we'll be able to establish a session um, as if it's just over the internet, no pre-staged software. And so as that, that runs, you can see you got a couple different options there for the end user to choose. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do just a base accept. Okay, so we have the session there. Now the most important thing, and this is why I wanted to demonstrate it this way, is this user wants to go ahead and you still install that same software. If you don't have the pre-staged software, see the difference there? So it shows up on this screen, but this one, it's been paused. And so essentially, um, to be able to capture the UAC prompts, you need to make sure you have the target software out beforehand. Um, so that's what I wanted to show is both the remote control sessions without any pre-staged software, uh, as well as you know the differences between those different session types. Okay, just wanted to show a few last brief things. So uh, if you do have software out there and you wanted to do a broker session but not unattended, um, in most cases, I don't have this, uh, this system configured to do as such, but you can basically make it to where you can actually enter the connection code you know, as one of the options here. So it's not going to show it in my current configuration, but uh, that is another, another way. Basically, you go to start a broker session, get the code, and just give them the code, and they can actually enter it through the system tray item. Uh, last two notes here. Um, so again, you know, the on-demand session is something that they could be leveraged to any system that is out on the internet. So again, no need for pre-stage software. Uh, one last thing I did want to mention, though, is that we also do have the remote control light web. Essentially what this is, is uh, I kind of I call it a hairpin session for remote control. And basically what it lets us do is it lets us go ahead and actually establish a session um, using the remote control broker as an admin directly to sessions that are either unattended uh, or by sessions, uh, you know, establishing a broker connection and then sharing the URL. Um, so I've seen a lot of applications for this. I've seen this used in outages. I've seen this used in a uh, somebody needs help and I'm no longer at work and I need to get to their system and get them helped out. Um, I could think of a number of different ways that this could be useful, but this gives you the ability to go ahead and actually start those sessions, um, you know, using the broker externally in order to uh, do sessions, again, over the internet. This won't allow you to, you know, hit any of the internal systems, just the uh, external either unattended systems or by sharing the URL. All right, well, thank you for your time and uh, for checking out remote control demonstrations with me today. Um, if you have any questions or want to know how this gets deployed in your environment, uh, don't hesitate to reach out and we'll get you set up. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you'd like to be notified when there's updates, please subscribe to the Big Fix TA YouTube channel. The link is below.